I've had the opportunity to collaborate with various engineers in my career, some highly successful, others still finding their way. In today's video, I want to unpack the various paths that successful engineers often take. My goal is to help you navigate your own journey towards success. Now, here's the thing. Success means different things to different people. What success looks like for me might not align with your vision. It's a personal journey after all. So we will explore a few different pathways, hoping that one resonates with your own definition of success. And if you are unsure about what success means to you, I highly recommend taking some time for self-reflection. The earlier in your career you reflect on that, the better. And the reason I emphasize this is that as humans, we tend to build our identity around our professional lives. Think of it like athletes retiring from sports. Sports. We often hear about them experiencing a profound sense of loss, dealing with depression and anxiety because their sport was their identity. When they retire, they no longer know who they are and they struggle to find a new purpose. And I believe this phenomenon is just as relevant for engineers. Picture this, if your definition of success involves eventually establishing your own small engineering firm but you've spent years climbing the corporate ladder and you recently earned the title of state manager with a promising promotion to CEO on the horizon. Yes, I know your experience would undoubtedly help to build your own business, but it becomes extremely difficult to leave the comfort of your current position and venture out into the business waters, especially when you have a family and kids relying on your support. On the other hand, if your goal is to ascend to the position of CEO or associate partner in a prestigious engineering company, it's crucial to start contemplating the paths that will lead you to this accomplishment. Of course, we can change our minds, but my point here is that you have to develop a sense of self-awareness. It's about recognizing where you truly want to be and understanding the steps needed to get there. Because success often requires aligning your professional journey with your personal aspirations. Within the realm of structural engineering, there is a myriad of pathways one can choose. Some opt for the academic route, delving into research and lecturing at universities. Others find their niche in smaller firms doing designs for residential and commercial projects. Then there are those who gravitate towards larger corporations, designing high-rises, bridges, and other tall structures that are often designed by a team of engineers. And there are also those who are drawn to industrial engineering design often involving projects with mining companies. Working for a small engineering firm might give you exposure to dealing with clients, putting together fee proposals, and working on projects from start to finish. On the other hand, working on larger firms might give you exposure to engineering projects that you would never be able to design in a small firm. Also, ideally, you want to have exposure to as many fields as you can. I remember working with a colleague who had been through roles as a site engineer, geotechnical engineer, and industrial design. At the time, he was working with me in the design of residential and commercial projects. His diverse experience made problem solving so easy for him that he would come up with creative solutions for any type of problem. The guy was like a walking encyclopedia, knowledgeable about everything. Now, realistically, not all of us will have the time or opportunity for such extensive exposure. You do what you can, giving your best in the roles you undertake. It's about making the most of your journey within the constraints of time and circumstances. And I will repeat that. It's about making the most of your journey within the constraints of time and circumstances. Every experience 
adds a layer to your expertise, which contributes to the unique professional you become. Remember, no one's like you. Your talents are unique, your experiences are unique, and you will always have something to bring to the table. And speaking on expertise, I am a firm believer that every structural engineer should at least know how to draft in CAD. And the sponsor of today's video is ZWU CAD. Let me ask you this, do you find AutoCAD's yearly fee a bit too hefty? What about all the default modules that you never use? ZWU CAD, an alternative to AutoCAD, not only matches AutoCAD's capabilities, but does so more efficiently and affordably. One of the critical factors I consider when shifting to a new software is how long it takes to relearn it. The good news is that ZWU CAD's interface is remarkably similar to AutoCAD, and the command names are the same. So if you know AutoCAD, you know ZWU CAD. Not to mention the DWG format compatibility. In other words, any drawings created in AutoCAD can be used in ZW CAD and vice versa. The standout feature, in my opinion, is the one-time fee with a perpetual license. No hidden fees, just a single payment. ZW CAD includes all the same common drawing features that AutoCAD has, plus exclusive features like the smart mouse for executing commands with gestures, smart select, smart plot, and even smart voice, allowing you to insert voice messages into your drawings, which is pretty cool. Not only is it lightweight, but it's also incredibly fast. It opens, views, edits, and saves heavy files faster than AutoCAD. Additionally, ZWU CAD is an open platform supporting powerful APIs, meaning you can customize and enhance the application. For those interested, there is a link in the description below for a 30 days free trial. I highly encourage you to give it a try and potentially save yourself some membership money. Link in the description below and let's get back to the video. So we've covered self-awareness and the importance of exposure to different fields and different size of companies. Now let's delve into a crucial aspect for anyone aspiring to be a successful engineer, which is comparison. Comparison is ingrained in us for survival. It's what kept our ancestors away from gigantic bears. They had to be able to compare themselves to a bear and realize that they could not mess with that animal or it would annihilate them. In the professional world, comparison can be a driving force, pushing you to reach for that desired promotion or salary raise that your workmate sitting next to you achieved and you have not. However, it is essential to recognize that everyone is on their unique journey and comparison can lead to disaster. As the saying goes, comparison is the thief of joy and the only person worth comparing yourself to is the person you were yesterday. I have a friend, let's call him Rick, who works for a large engineering firm in Brisbane. He's highly competitive, great in sports like marathons and triathlons. However, he found himself in a spiral of anxiety as he compared himself to a workmate who was a spreadsheet wizard spending weekends building spreadsheets to optimize his designs. Rick was feeling like he was falling behind and his stress levels increased. So I sat down with him one day and reminded him that success is subjective and tied to priorities. Success for one person might be a balanced life, while for another, it could be a full-time high achiever engineer. Don't get me wrong though, if you're just starting out your career, you should probably spend some weekends studying and building spreadsheets. Comparison can be a tricky road, but understanding that everyone's path is unique and defining success on your terms is a powerful mindset to cultivate. And you know what's funny? Even after sharing all this advice with Rick, there are times I catch myself comparing to him because he is in a large company designing impressive high rises and all those modern buildings that you see in the city center. Meanwhile, here I am, self-employed, at home, hustling to get clients, 
calling architects, calling builders, and then when I land projects, they tend to be on a much smaller scale, you know, like renovations or new houses. Don't get me wrong, they're often interesting projects, but in my mind, they're not as great in comparison to the prestigious high rises Rick is immersed in. Yet in these moments, I force myself to pause and reflect on what success truly means to me. And you know what? I've come to the realization that I am exactly where I want to be at this moment and I find genuine happiness in my life. See, those are one of the reasons I make these videos. They hold me accountable and remind me of my own flaws. And that's why I love making these videos. Now, moving forward, my next crucial point is about planning your structural civil engineering career for the long term, which circles back to my initial advice, but let me illustrate with different examples. One of my mates, not Rick now, another mate, is a civil engineer manager in a large corporation specializing in massive public infrastructure projects. I've been chatting with him and as he dreams of launching his own business down the road, he's struggling with the difficulty of getting clients for smaller projects. His extensive experience with massive government initiatives, which is very impressive, don't get me wrong, but it's now a challenge for him to downsize and secure clients for a small business. Let me explain this better. The skills that he has now require him to have a team around him because he doesn't have all the skills necessary to run the business on his own. Of course, if he's got the initial capital to invest in, that's great. There are many ways to work around that and I'm sure he will figure things out. But my point is that a more strategic career plan could have made the transition much smoother. Of course, that is easier said than done. We don't always have the luxury to choose everything from the beginning and life is unpredictable. However, if you're not at that point yet, learn from those who are. It's like reading books where people open up about their life decisions and the outcomes, which gives you a chance to pick up some valuable insights. Let's consider another example. Suppose your goal is to become an engineering manager in a tier one company. In that case, you should proactively start developing the necessary skills. And this would entail not only strong technical expertise, but also also leadership skills, mastery of presentations, possibly public speaking. Knowing these things in advance will give you an edge to start planning your civil structure engineering career for the long term. And the reason I'm telling you these examples is that in my opinion, now that you have a clear idea of your own definition of success, you should start learning the skills and working for a company that aligns with your vision. And lastly, but certainly not least, health. For those who have been following me on social media, you've probably noticed that I am a strong advocate for putting self-care at the top of your priority list. I emphasize this because I've encountered senior engineers with exceptional technical skills, but so stressed out that it was uncomfortable to be around them. Stress is inevitable in any career, but your ability to handle it and still bring positive energy to your work environment is closely tied to your health. And for those of you between 18 and 34 years old, which is about 70% of my audience, remember that the consequence of your habits now will only show up in the future and they compound. So don't be naive and think, I'll take care of myself next year when I finish uni because more often than not, you won't. Think of it this way. When we want to stabilize a building, we use triangle shapes like cross bracings, trusses, strut and tie. The same concept applies to your personal life. You've got health, mind and spirit all interconnected. And if you want a stable life, work on your personal triangle in the same way that you work to stabilize a building. I'm here to play the long game. It doesn't matter if you're the smartest engineer, if you're not healthy, if you can't handle stress, 
or be a pleasant person to be around, you won't lose in this game or any game. And honestly, if you find it hard to prioritize self-love for your own sake, do it for your workmates, friends, and family who loves you. They will appreciate your efforts. And that, my friends, is how you get ahead of 99% of other civil structural engineers out there. There are some practical hacks that I use that will make your engineering life way easier. And I talk about them in this video. And I'll see you there.